Welcome to Proverbs for Life Today, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. Today we come to chapter 4 of Proverbs where Solomon's instructing his son, and really all of us, about how wisdom can change our life so it'll be so much better. Because that wisdom only comes from God, and it's built upon knowing Jesus Christ as Savior. If you've never been born again by faith today, Jesus said you cannot see the kingdom of God without being born again first. So if you want to know more about how you can have eternal life and all your sins forgiven by faith in Jesus Christ, then stick around to the end of the video. I'll be standing in front of a bricks background and I will share from the scriptures the best news in the whole world that Jesus loves you and died on the cross for you. And by faith, you can receive his forgiveness as a free gift because he died for you on the cross and was raised on the third day. But for now, let's dive into the study. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. So in Proverbs 4, God has been telling us what the path of the wicked is like and what the people on that path are like. And he continues that description in verse 17. Verse 17 divides into two parts like we've seen in so many other verses in this. They eat the bread of wickedness, and that would be like the first part to me, and drink the wine of violence. So the second part starts right there, and this is the first part of that second part. But let's go back to the first part. These people, the they, are the wicked that he was talking about in the preceding verses. The ones who can't sleep unless they cause people to stumble. They don't give any rest to themselves or others. They're constantly on the attack. And they want to attack you. But those wicked people eat the bread of wickedness. Think about that. Jesus described himself as the bread of life that we are to eat of that bread. We are to take Jesus in by faith so that he lives as a spirit within us and he loves us. Remember that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. These are the bad guys. These are the wicked people. They eat the bread of wickedness. It's like they have a continual feast on that all day long. They're continuing looking for their next meal of wickedness. They delight in what they do. They're very evil people. But what's the second half like? So not only do they eat the bread of wickedness, but they also drink the wine of violence. And you go, okay. So they eat the bread of wickedness. I get that. They're constantly doing wickedness. They eat the bread of wickedness. It's just a regular part of their life. And then when they are drinking, when they're eating, they're also drinking, and they drink the wine of violence. And what a poetic way of putting it, just like we read so often in the wisdom literature, which includes Proverbs in the Old Testament. talks about the wisdom of God. So here he's describing these wicked people who run down the path of evil, that they eat the bread of wickedness, and they drink the wine of violence. They are, by nature and by practice, very violent people. They're violent in their actions. They're violent in their words. They're violent in their thoughts. They think violent thoughts. They're scheming about not only how to stumble themselves and how to go about in darkness, but they want to entice others to go with them. They're looking to grab you, hold you, feed you that bread of wickedness, make you drink that wine of violence with them. And you don't have to go there. You can avoid that path. You can avoid these people. By the power of Jesus Christ, that loving power that he has, his strength in your life, the blessing of the Holy Spirit in your life can overcome that violence, that wickedness that they want to put into your life. And maybe you're already there. Maybe you're reading these verses and going, that's me, that I am one of those people who eats the bread of wickedness, that I'm one of those people who drinks the wine of violence. Well, today's your day by faith in Jesus Christ. You can believe that he'll forgive you of all that, that you'll start a new life today, 
and you'll walk with him forever. But for the rest of us, just don't go down that road. Thank God that he got us off of that road, a road that leads to destruction and many people turn in at that gate and go there. We're only a relative few, according to Jesus, turn into the gate of righteousness and enter and go to heaven through faith in him. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and the beauty of your word. May we stay away from the people who will make us eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Father, we pray for all those folks that they'd hear your word, turn to you because I know you love them and you don't want any to perish but for all to come to repentance. So we thank you, Lord. May we reach out to them as they come across our path. May we encourage them to know Jesus as Savior. We pray in his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question. Why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good or tried to do more good than bad or I tried hard or I've done a lot of nice things and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, we've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sin, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 6.23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far, we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord, and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5.8 tells us. It says, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this. That I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. 
You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you the free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty, eternal destruction. So we can receive that free gift right now by faith, and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess, too, that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But, Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God, and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me, in your name I pray, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. Scripture quotations taken from the NASB, New American Standard Bible, copyright 1995 by the Lockman Foundation. Used by permission, all rights reserved.